Miss Johnson tells me that you love to sing. Is that true? Love. <laughs> of course it is. Now, what I need is a volunteer from the audience. Someone who's not shy. Let's see. I'll use my famous system. It's been proven all over the world. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a ball. <laughs> my mommy told me to pick you. You. And you. Okay, you guys are going to be my singers here. Okay, now you stand here, and you stand here, okay? And you guys think, oh, we're going to sing Old MacDonald. Do you think we're going to sing that? No! No. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Twinkle. Twinkle. Oh, we're going to do that at the end. No. What I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a song that has been never before released in the Hawthorne Library. You will be a pioneer. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, your job is to sort of stand there and go like this. Okay, your job is to stand there and go like this. Can you do that? Oh, good. Okay, how about you? Fine. Okay, how about you're supposed to go like this? Well, we okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a song. I'm going to do it really, really slow. And then after you've learned it, we're all going to do it together. Ready? Okay. Now. The people that are saying never, they're never going to get a record deal. Okay. okay, listen closely. I'll do it really slow. Well, I ran around the corner and I ran around the block and I ran right into the bakery shop. There I picked up a donut all fried and greased and I handed the baker a five cent piece. Well, he looked at the nickel and he looked at me and he said this nickel's no good you see there's a hole in the middle and I said that's true but there's a hole in the middle of the donut too thanks for the donut so long <laughs> okay you guys got it yeah. okay good <laughs> I, I'm not up on my terminology tight means what oh thanks <laughs> okay are you ready Okay, one, two, three. Well, I ran around the corner and I ran around the block and I ran right into the bakery shop. There I picked up a donut all fried and greased and I handed the baker a five cent piece. Well, he looked at the nickel and he looked at me and he said, this nickel's no good, you see. There's a hole in the middle and I said, that's true. But there's a hole in the middle of the donut too. Thanks for the donut. So long. All right. <laughs> Thank you, helpers. Thank you so much. Okay, my agent will call you. <laughs> Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to hear some stories and then I'm going, to show, I'm going to teach each and every one of you how to design, create, engineer your very own rocket and your rocket's going to fly inside this building. Some rockets have been known to fly so high that they touch the roof. By the end of the day, you'll know how you'll be able to do that. How many people think they'll be able to build their own rocket? How many people promise not to crash their rocket into my head? <laughs> hey, I didn't see you raise your hand back there. <laughs> okay, the canister that you have, if you don't play with it, it's probably good for about three flights. If you keep popping the top on and popping it around, when launch time comes, your rocket's probably going to go and you're going to be sitting there going, well, what happened? Okay, so it's very important that you don't play with these canisters that we're giving to you, okay? Don't bang them around, don't step on them, don't open and close them because that damages them, okay? Deal? Deal. Let's put it this way. You only get one. If you break this one, oh well. 
you only get one. We gave okay. them to you because we only have so many. And we wanted to make sure that the kids who got here in on time got one. But if you break it, oh well. Are you breaking? By popping the lid on and off. Don't do that. Okay, now let's close our talking boxes and open up our listening ears. And everybody should be facing forward before I get started. Tinker and Tom couldn't get to sleep. They sat on the edge of the bed, gazing out the window. They had not been there for long when a small bright object went streaking through the sky. Buh, what's that? said Tom. That's a baby star, Tinker told him. It's probably got lost and now it's looking for its mother. Oh, wow. uh, well, said baby. That baby star must think its mother's in our backyard said Tom as the bright object shot past the window and disappeared over the crest in the hill in the middle of the yard. Quick, Tom, said Tinker. The baby star might need some help. Tom followed Tinker down the stairs and through the kitchen door and into the backyard. They reached the top of the hill and they saw it, the object that had shone so brightly moments before. <gasps> It's a spaceship, said Tinker. Indeed it was, although it looked like a crash can with tail fins and a pointy top. As Tinker and Tom stood looking at the small craft, they thought they heard a small voice crying inside. <laughs> Tom rolled the spaceship over, and when he did, the bubble-shaped lid popped open. Anybody have any idea what's inside? An alien. An alien, you think? A star. A star. A star. Let's see. Inside the spaceship sat a tiny star-headed baby. And when it saw Tom's fuzzy face, it stopped crying and began to make noises like, <laughs> and it reached up and smiled. It likes me, said Tom, as he picked up the baby and hugged it. You know, maybe it thinks you're its mother, said Tinker. <laughs> said Tom, I'm not your mother, I'm a bear. <laughs> While Tom held the baby, Tinker examined the spaceship. Hmm, it's got a few dents, but nothing seems to be broken. Uh, maybe it's just out of gas. <laughs> maybe, said Tinker, but let's take it inside for a closer look. So Tinker and Tom carried the baby star and the spaceship back into the house. In the kitchen, Tom put the baby on the floor and helped Tinker hoist the spaceship onto the table. They found a couple of hammers in the drawer and they began to knock out the dents. Meanwhile, Baby Star had discovered Fluffy's cat food dish. Fluffy, who had been sleeping on a pile of clean clothes, woke up and saw Baby Star eating all her food. said the cat, and he started to pounce. Wait a minute, cat! Don't you hurt that baby! Too late, Fluffy sprang toward the baby, who just looked up and pointed at the fast approaching cat. What do you think the cat's gonna do to this baby? Eat him up? Hurt him? No, but this baby, I think, has a secret weapon. Instantly, Fluffy flipped over to her back and began to float around the room. The baby kept eating and pointing. And soon, Fluffy was joined into orbit by an assortment of things, including a toaster, a blender, and several boxes of cereal. 
A few of Tinker's crayons joined the procession, making interesting designs on the walls and ceilings as they circled the room. The pounding had awakened Tinker's father, who came downstairs to see what all the noise was about. Hey, what's going on here? He demanded. So we're trying to fix Baby Star's spaceship, Tinker explained, so he can go find his mother. That's when Tinker's father caught sight of Baby Star. He opened his mouth and he tried to say something, but nothing came out. He could only point and stir, stare and baby, st baby Star's mouth smeared with cat food pointed right back. <gasps> <gasps> Suddenly, Tinker's father rose several inches off the floor, spinned around three times. Hey, Dad, Tinker called. Do we have any rocket fuel? But his father didn't answer, so Tinker decided to make some rocket fuel. Does anybody here know how to make rocket fuel? Anybody want to try and guess? Okay, he thinks you should put alcohol. What else? Baking soda. Baking soda. Anybody else? Any other ideas? Vinegar. Any other ideas for rocket fuel? Fire. 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 You don't play with fire. Any other ideas? Well, you're going to burn all your clothes off. Any other ideas? Oil. Oil. Do you want to see how you make rocket fuel? Okay, I'll tell you the secret. Okay, Does it, do any of you work for the Russian government? No? Okay, I'll tell you how to make rocket fuel. Okay. So he took some orange juice from the refrigerator and he poured it into a small hole he found into the back of the spaceship. Then he added a bottle of ketchup and a can of pea soup, and a jar of honey, and a pot of baked beans, and a dozen of eggs, and a half a box of soap powder. Now let's see if it works. So they carried the spaceship to the backyard. Tinker set the spaceship on the ground. They put the baby inside. And and Tom said, wait, wait, I don't want to let go. I don't want him to leave. Now, Tom, you know we can't keep him. He needs to go find his mother. <sighs> All right. So Tom put the baby inside. And when Tinker closed the lid, the spaceship began to glow and hum but it didn't move. Let's give it a push, said Tinker. So they did. The baby laughed and laughed and laughed, and the spaceship went scraping and bouncing across the yard. And with a bang and a whoosh, the scrap shot into the sky, leaving a trail of smoke. In a moment, it was out of sight. Duh. Goodbye, baby, said Tom. And for a long time, Tinker and Tom just stood there looking up. And suddenly, from far away, a beam of light shone down on them. Duh, I think Baby Star finally found his mother. <laughs> and then Tinker and Tom slowly walked back into